So now let's get to uh, creating that extra effect, extra volumetric effect. I'm going to switch back to OpenGL. And the way I'm going to do that is, uh, let's see. So we have here the SOP imports and we're using this. So I'm going to grab this path. It's going to be useful. And I'm going to create a SOP create. Let's do it actually this context. So the SOP create, I'm going to call this um, fog. And it's going to be put into uh, volume fog. I'm also going to be merging this into what we already have. And let's dive inside. So going inside, I'm going to create um, object merge, control V. So now we have our artifact. I want to make sure that we have a time shift. So this is frozen at frame 100 or something. Frame 96 is fine. Let's add a bound. This will make sure that we have kind of a bounding box for our volume that envelops the, the totality of the, um, of the artifact. I'm just going to add some padding. So 0 0.5 on all of these. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Now, finally, if we, if you want to check how it's looking, it's this, nothing special. Let's uh, create a VDB from polygons. Going to make sure it's uh, not a, an SCF, but a density, fill interior. Uh, we don't really need much detail on this, but yeah, let's bring it down to 0.05. And uh, that's it. That's pretty much all we need. Let's go outside. Let's create a material network. Material library, sorry. Material library, force of habit, I guess. And this is going to go to the volume. Materials inside. We'll create, let's just type volume. We should have a volume shader core. Just going to lower the density. I know this is already too much. So let's start at 0 0.2, like that. I'm going to call this fog. Go outside. And let's assign. Assign material. Let's grab our fog primitive. And we should also have here the material library, volume materials. We should have a materials section here, but we don't. Well, and the reason why we don't is because you need to turn on the flag, otherwise it's not gonna be considered. So now we do have the material available. Let's go here and let's just grab it and actually apply it. Now let's have a look at this with Karma. Okay, we have uh, our cool volumetric effect with some volumetric shadows also being applied to it. Um, here we can clearly see that the hierarchy isn't really following what I, what I wanted. Um, as you can see, the volumetric shadows are being more obvious on the light source from above, the spotlight we created. So I really need to make sure that the, the main light source is going to be this one. So I really want to, let's go to the camera. Go to camera. So yeah. Let's just uh, try to fine tune it. This is somewhat demanding. I'm going to switch to OpenGL, Shift R on the viewport, just to try and make it faster. So the spot, I'm going to lower the intensity of the spotlight to like four or five. And I'm going to try and increase the intensity of the core. 
instead of using an emissive value of 20 let's try 40 let's go up and what else here on the material for the fog I'm gonna lower the density a bit 0.1 you can play with the scattering phase uh, I'm gonna try with minus 0.2 so this basically controls how the light is scattered inside the volume because we're not doing um, um, any bouncing of light inside the volume this may not be all that relevant I think from the test that I did it, this actually seemed to have some effect so if it's positive the light is going to be scattered forward if it's negative the light is going to be scattered uh, backward um, if it's minus one it's completely backwards one completely forward zero it's going to be kind of completely random so I'm gonna put it at minus 0 0.2 and I think that that was giving a, an interesting result next um, yeah let's have a look at how this is going so now we definitely have less light coming from above that's pretty obvious uh, the volumetric shadows now seem to be coming more from within the core and that's more what I was going for so definitely in the right direction I'm gonna switch back to OpenGL and I'm gonna try and increase the light of the core a bit more so the emissive I'm gonna go all the way to 50 going up and let's add a karma so that we can actually start playing with the uh, parameters for our render so here I'm not gonna worry about the output picture output path not just yet I am going to select the camera and the resolution making sure we're rendering at full HD uh, at the point at the moment I'm just going to leave it at this resolution um, otherwise it's going to take a while so let's leave it like that the pixel samples let's go all the way up to 16 and here are the maximum ray samples let's lower this to 8 for the time being the main section that I want to address is the limits we do have a lot of refraction going on and multiple layers this will probably be more obvious on the beginning of the animation if we look at this we should be able to see the difference between having and we can for the time being just override the, the volume so we have this and as you can see we don't see uh, too deep inside the um, the artifact actually we do know we have several layers and we do have a light source in the inside but it doesn't seem to be very readable at this point if we go to karma the limits for the refraction at four are probably not enough so let's go up to eight and now we start to see something inside so this is the issue with uh, refraction limit uh, four in most situations you're not going to be um, faced with issues regarding a limit of four for most situations that'll be enough but in this case we do have a lot of layers of refractive material and we're not able to see what's inside unless we increase this limit for the reflection it's not as serious it's not as noticeable uh, so I will leave it at four in terms of the fuse limit this is something where we can actually save some some render time if we decide that we're not all that interested about um, indirect illumination inside the object Though it would make sense that we would be interested um, otherwise it'll get too dark if we increase the diffuse limit to four for instance we should see things get a bit light a bit lighter uh, but the render times the consequence of these uh, the increase in render times uh, related to this diffuse limit of four are much more visible will be much more noticeable than the actual difference it's going to make on the image so a limit of one seems um, enough what else um the volume limit we're not all that interested in having uh, light scattered inside this volume this is a very generic generic fog uh, if you want you can increase the volume limit um, to one or something but I really don't think it's worth the, the extra render time for that also on the sampling you have a section for the volumes and you can play with these values overall these will work fine uh, we can reduce uh, reduce the volume step rate to 0 0.2 try and increasing the screen door samples to 8 and um, this uh, seems to be more effective in terms of reducing noise than 
this, uh, the volume uh, step rate. Um, this will be more expensive 